See? This is what shitty admin gets you. You heard so this cops. morning. I gotta write more tickets. If you're that guy, get the fuck off my channel. Then don't be a cop. Because a cop with zero discretion so, is not so, a good cop. You're not always going to make the right decision. You won't. That's just the nature of that. That's, that's, that's being human. But the consequences of not making the right decision as an officer versus anyone else are catastrophic at times. Welcome back, Internet, to Only Cops. Uh, we have another wonderful rookie episode with you here. Our fourth here. What? Your radio yeah. announcer voice is really killing yeah, this yeah. intro. And, uh, I love it. Over here. I love it. So, uh, hot singles are waiting for you. Righteous or rigid? <laughs> we're back at it with the rookie. We're back at it with the rookie. And hopefully, we can get a more appropriate intro than that. So, uh, producer Juan set this up for us. Uh, come find two man with us, and we can go glean some educational stuff from the rookie. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Oh no, Alton. You will be leading roll call this morning. Oof. Sir? I didn't study. Get up there. What now? The clipboard. <clears throat> uh, memo to all divisions from the chief of police. Complaints about police officer entitlement have risen sharply during the last few months. Sir, do you know what that means? Police officer entitlement. I assume it has to do with unauthorized perks, free food, things of that nature. And what is LAPD's policy on gratuities? No officer shall receive any gratuity, gift, favor, or promise thereof as it may result in or be perceived as payment in exchange for influence, bias, or direction of an investigation or enforcement of punishable offenses. Nice. Nicely done. Chen West, will you please join Officer Nolan up front? <laughs> Have your training officers discuss this policy with you. Yes, yes, sir. And what was your takeaway? Sir, if I may. Oh. Sounds like a little CYA. No, wow. sir. <laughs> Boot and I walk straight and narrow. But business is like having cops around. Half price meal every once in a while is just community relations. Doesn't mean we show them favoritism. You agree with this, Officer Bishop? I'm not saying I've never accepted a free cup of coffee, but it's usually the exception, not the norm. What about you, Officer Nolan? I got into this job to help people, not to help myself to free stuff. Cute line. This bunch of bull, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Really? Do you pay fair market value for that beach house you live in? No, sir, but I act as caretaker for the main house when Ben is away, so technically I'm exchanging services for my rent. And what happens when that exchange isn't enough and your buddy gets a ticket off? Or worse. Then he'll have to pay for his actions. Okay. Favors are a slippery slope, people. So are freebies. Look. Pause that. How does he have any right to talk about this guy's living situation? Yeah. I, so when it comes to stuff, so I specifically, me personally, I brought my lunch every day to work. Mm -hmm. I, anything that I was going to need to consume, I brought with me. Right? And we did not take free coffee from the gas stations. Nope. Cause None it's of gross. That. A, it's gross. <laughs> but B, especially where we worked, it was gross. Yeah, it was gross. Uh, the only gratuity I took was the Hilton did not bat an eye at me going poop in their bathroom. That is true. Because the Hilton had a really nice bathroom. A nice bathroom. Nice uh, and clean. Good stalls. Uh, and it was always warm in the wintertime. Yeah. They would like, because they would heat the whole building. Yeah. And so it was really nice. Um, so I guess as a gratuity, I guess that's, I, I was allowed to poop inside. Yeah. Uh, even though it was public access and stuff like that. Um, I, I will say this. I think that there, I think having policy on the books for it is a good idea. Uh, and I think that the way that most officers interact with this is that, uh, it is something that's often offered to them, and they're stuck in this awkward Texas standoff with them that they don't want to take it, but the person insists that they want to give it to them. I will say this personally. I avoided all of those situations like the plague because I didn't want to be stuck in that situation. To be That's why you don't go thing. to those restaurants yeah. that I try never, and give you food. A, I worked in a place where it wasn't terribly safe to go eat lunch just anywhere. But I did see several times where yeah. cops would go to like the same gas station yeah. and build relationships with the clerks. Sure. The clerks felt... Way safer. Mm -hmm. 
especially working the shifts that we worked, well, like the late night shifts where crazy shit usually happened at a gas station. Yeah. And and I will say this, like the what she was talking about about like a fair exchange of just them getting to know him and it's public you can develop that without an exchange of goods. It's perfectly it is easy to just come in and check on people. I did it all the time. Yeah. Uh like we had extended stays. Yeah, we would like go to the gas station go, hey, to buy going? stuff. We never you know? went there for free. I spent money every food. time. Yeah. I did not let people give me yeah. stuff. And I specifically this was the savage way of doing it. I would get products that had to be checked out. Yes. So it I would buy like, like an energy drink yeah, or I'd buy like, like stuff. I'm not going to go grab, like, uh, a coffee that, like, there's this gray area as to whether or not they're going to give me this coffee. But also, yeah. we had people refuse to take no for an answer and pay for our stuff. Sure. It happens. That does happen. But uh, so, I think I think it's an interesting... It's, it's in the gray. Yeah. I, I think this comes from a, a history of being worried about the possible abuses, which are merited, to be honest, uh, of taking a gratuity or taking favoritism or again not having an equal equal apl- application of the law i think it's perfectly warranted i am an, i'm annoyed that he brought up this guy's living situation though. i agree like that's i completely agree there is the letter of the law and there's the spirit it is your jobs to know the difference but make no mistake as police officers you have power usually we like to focus on the kind that you holster on your side but the power that lives within your badge can be equally as dangerous. That's it. All right, guys, be safe out there. Why doesn't he have a body camera? He's a sergeant, so he thinks he's above body cameras. That's what it is. He's getting that. He's getting a taste of that administrative power, and he doesn't know. Yeah, how you want to talk about power? You want to talk about abusing? You think these little yeah. stripes on your on oh. your shoulder give you some power? Mm-hmm. He's over here lecturing people about that. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to embarrass you for my own fun. I could have a con- an adult conversation with other adults about how gratuities are dangerous and the spirit of the law. No. Let's I'm talk about the dick and make the rookies do it. Let's talk about the spirit of leadership. My, my ego requires that I sit there and go and, and subjugate <sighs> some poor rookie just trying not to get fired at his job to that. Look, I don't have time for this. Like, no one does. But you blew through that stop sign. Because and... Prince Charles is going to die. Excuse me? My dog. Oh, he's a King Charles go. Cavalier, and he ate a whole bag of macadamia nuts. Look, I'm sorry, but I still have to write you. No, I'm you give her a police escort I'm right now. I'm racing into the vets. They have to pump his stomach. Those nuts are toxic Look, for dogs. I understand, but this will only take a minute. Oh. License your registration, please. Pause it. She'd get a police escort from me. I don't even care if I'm in field training. If Bill was that FTO. Oh. <sighs> He says, so rookie, I'm going code behind them. You can walk. That's exactly how that would have gone down. Oh, yeah. I yeah. tell them to walk back to the station. <laughs> you know what? You're done. You're done. Get the hell out of here. You're getting an F- a new FTO or you're fired. Hope your dog's okay. Have a nice day. Go to hell. Also, don't say have a nice day. Do you nice think day. a ticket was the best resolution, Officer West? You heard Sergeant Gray this morning. We have to remain vigilant. Pause. See? This is what shitty admin gets you. You heard Sergeant shitty this cops. morning. I gotta write more tickets. If you're that guy, get the fuck off my channel. We'll keep going. A rush off the hook said he would be undrivable. Her dog is dying. A warning would have been sufficient. Okay, a dog that size would have to eat a pound of nuts to induce ataxia. She drove to the stop sign in the school zone. It's a pretty serious infraction. We blow stop signs all the time and park on lawns and drive on the wrong side of the road. Okay, that, that's different. We're cops. We only do it when necessary. Exactly. Discretion is an important part of this job, mm-hmm. even if the outcome is different than following the letter of the law. With all due respect, I was raised differently. The law is a law. Then don't be a cop. Because a cop with zero discretion so, is not so, a good cop. Yeah, I was about to say, so the, the, the reason why, and, and this is... This goes into the whole reason why, like, the Constitution I'm so exists. mad we picked yeah, this video. Yeah, I mean, he's already got me fucked up in this video. So, the reason, and I'm a spirit of the law kind of guy, which is for better or for worse. That being said, the reason why you want officers to have discretion. I, I had, I'll give you a call where discretion, my lack of discretion made me want to go punch myself in the face. We had a guy that was calling his new wife uh, a whale and saying she would do nothing without him. He's very manipulative and abusive. and all. I, I witnessed a lot of this stuff happen. 
So her son uh, from a previous marriage was in the house with them. His mom is being verbally abused at this point and and harassed and was put in a situation where like she was made to stay home and work or and stay home and take care of the kids so he was financially in control of like everything. He like it was it, he was a really toxic situation. So he took a maybe 2 ounce toy. It was, it was like a little toaster. And it literally was like you know like a dog like a chew toy. Mm-hmm. It's super light. He threw it at the guy. And to stop, you know, effing talking to my mom like that. It hit him. Left no mark. I can't imagine. I even hit myself on body camera in the face with it. Pretty hard. And I was like, this caused you pain? Because he was claiming that it caused him pain. Because he's not new to domestic violence. He knew where the the law was. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, it caused me pain. And I, because of state statute, I have a victim telling me that it is causing him pain. And they are both in their primary residence. And... They are domestically related. I had to take that kid to jail. And I hated that. I This kid's sticking up for his mom that's in a pretty abusive situation. And even he, he was very compliant. Oh, yeah, of course. The kid was super cool about the whole thing. He's like, dude, you got to do what you got to do. He said, I'm scared. But, uh, you know, I just couldn't sit there. And, and, he, and I felt so bad. The mom felt bad. And he was so toxic. This guy was sitting in this house saying, well, you raised such a shitty son. It's because you're a... in my... Fa- and I was like, I got to leave. I was like, I can't do this. Let's go. And so that situations like that will arise constantly for you. And when discretion is taken away from you as an officer, I have to act here or I am violating the law. And when I do that, like if I'm willing to violate the law here, I'm willing to violate the law. Again, there's, there's that... Mm-hmm. I need to consistently uphold the the oath that I took. And if, if this law is seen to be constitutional by courts higher than me, then I have to act on that. And, and it's kind of why I have an issue with the way that he said that laws are laws or whatever. He has zero discretion because it really runs you into, like, imagine straight face walking into that situation, arresting a son who's sticking up for her mom, or like, is this very abusive person and allowing your position to be weaponized by an abuser. Really wrap your head around that. It's and people really... know how to use the law to their advantage. Yep. That happened a lot. So I mean, Domestics anyways. like that happened a lot. That's why there's a good argument for this whole spirit of law discussion. We'll keep going. Hi, are you the manager? Yes, hi. Sir, we received a call that one of your customers is being held against their will. He's not a customer. He's a scam artist. Excuse me? This guy sets up first dates with women, runs up the bill, and then sneaks out the back door. He's been doing it at restaurants all over the neighborhood. He tried to do it to that poor woman over there, but one of our kitchen staff caught him and locked his ass in the walk of the bridge. Give us a minute. An investigation ensues. Seems like you're having a pretty bad day. Tinder is like the clearance rack at an outlet store. Baby, that's all bad. He ordered a $500 bottle of wine for lunch, and then the charcuterie board, and the cheese plate, and the steak go guava, and... The bill is $680. I don't know how I'm going to cover my rent this month. Did you already order dessert? No. Go ahead and get something. Maybe two things. Why? Look, I know what you're doing. She bumped up the bill to 700 We can charge her date with a felony. Very good, Officer West. It's not our job to put our thumb on the scale and change the outcome here. Are you lecturing me on police work, Boo? <laughs> no. <laughs> but nothing. Go hook up our Dine and Dasher. Definitely get the creme brulee. Best creme brulee in the city. Okay. No, I can't now, go and eat. Now oh, you're taking my. it a little too far. I was with you. I was riding with you so hard <laughs> until right now. <laughs> you just shit all over the spirit. So. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. We were, well, not we were going thing. so literally, good. Literally, so the producers are the rookie. You know what? You, you know what? No, 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 no. She paid for that herself. She got it to go since they were already in the restaurant. Bet. It's not the ladies. Bet. I'm back with her. I'm okay. We're going to say that. Let's see what he says. You're totally fine with this. Susan isn't stuck paying the bill since the owners can write it off as theft. The only person paying for the crime is this jerk who committed it. That's the spirit of law. Now, take a bite. No, I don't. I don't want it. Come on, get off your high horse and try a little. No, uh, I think it's... Just, mm-hmm. just this, is, this is a lack of consent. 
I bet it's good. I bet it's delicious. Mm -hmm. You know what I bet it tastes like? Justice. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it tastes now, like. Now, <laughs> I wouldn't have eaten it off her spoon because I don't share food like that. But. Yeah. You say that on camera. I know you. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> sure. You weren't my FTO. <laughs> That's true. That's true. We have a different relationship to that. That's right. Anyways. Uh, yeah, that you can't. Uh, she not, paid for that. She bought it herself. She paid for that. We're going to go where she paid for that. I'm just going to sit and enjoy the video, guys. I'm just going to watch the episode and enjoy it without analyzing it too much. You're not done yet? At this stage in training, you should have knocked that out in two minutes. What's the That's problem? That's not true. I'm, I'm not sure how to write it. It's a simple grand theft report. It's not simple. Or we made that case a felony. Something that should have been a citation. We turned into a weekend in jail. You want me to lie on the report? I seem to remember writing a report about you. Second day on the job. And the truth about your cowardice in the line of fire. Ringing a bell? Yeah. And I'm grateful. Mm. You know that, but I'm not. But what, Boot? More than any other rookie, you should know the difference between the spirit and the letter. Unless you don't think it applies to you. Are you the exception, Officer West? Here you are acting holier than thou. Tell me something. Do you carry a push knife? One of those fight for your life, last resort, do or die kind of knives. You know that I do. I mean, my, my dad gave it to me. Oh, right. Your father, who all but walked the water. Only this knife is illegal. Yeah, right. I mean, half the department carry these. Penal code section 12020, the very bottom. Technically, it's a dagger. Look it up if you don't believe me. If it's true, then I just won't carry one anymore. That is the wrong lesson to learn here. You're in for a hard fall if you can't see the difference between righteous and rigid. And if that wasn't the first thing your father taught you, he failed you. Damn. Savage. Now fill out the damn report. We gotta get back out there. Also, guarantee that knife's against their general orders for the uniform. One thousand percent. Yeah. So, and I will say this about push blades. You better know what the hell you're doing with that. Yeah, that's no a bad weapon to lose to somebody. Yeah. Oof, if, especially if you're grappling. Empty hand skills are important. However, that being said, if I was a small statured, very soft man, I'd probably need a push blade. Well, that being said, that being said, there's be there's better men than me that are small statured and soft. But I was I was beat up by a small statured man that was twice my age when I was in academy. Most humbling experience of my yeah. life. Like, I was a grown man having some old bastard stand on top of me like, hey, man, you can figure it out? Like, literally soft punching me in the face. Like, hey, man. He goes, hey, 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 sort it out. So, like, as he's beating me and I'm, like, drowning. Yeah. It was, I learned Terrible a lot. times. I learned a lot. Anyways, for those of you that are civilians that will never have to get into the situation, or for those of you that are aspiring officers that, that, that really want to kind of get at what, what that discussion's about and it's that your your job your oath is to people and your oath is to this idea that people have the freedom to live their lives unoppressed by other people or unjust laws um today and, and i think this conversation's better today and a better conversation to have today than other times because i think we are losing sight of requiring everyone to conform to one frame of thought or one frame of, of perspective. There, there's nothing wrong with having a letter of the law attitude about stuff as long as you can see the other side of the fence. There's no problem with being like myself, a spirit of the law kind of guy, but still enforcing the law when I know it has to be done. I might not like it, but I understand the reasoning and the rationale and the relationship I have with not just my profession, but the oath that I took when I was an officer. So like we get so caught up in wanting to be right. And we get so caught up in our own myopic kind of perspective that we lose sight of either the other side of the fence or other rationale or the reasoning for it. And you end up like that. And when you're an officer, you turn into the oppressor that they accuse you of being really, I really truly mean that. 
uh, on both sides of the fence. Uh, if you're like a hardcore spirit of the law kind of guy, well, well, I don't think it should be illegal, so I'm not going to enforce that. Yeah, can't roll that way. How far is that willing to go? I can't know for sure that this guy hit his wife, but she's crying like it totally happened. But it's kind of in the gray, so I think I'm going to leave him here. I'll write that memo. Right, sure. And then she gets killed after that? I, I legitimately, personal story. Had a kid, uh, 16 years old. He goes, hits mom and dad, jumps out of the window, and runs. And we have to go chase him. So we go chase him. I talked about this in our podcast. Mm-hmm. We chase him like for a mile. I drove because I'm not an idiot. Um, and this we, was after he was an idiot yeah, a few yeah, times. Yeah. He he gets tired. We catch up to him. And I say, hey, man, like you're going to – it was uh, the juvenile detention center mm-hmm. that we had. He's a kid 16. And he decides to fight with everything he's got. And because I didn't want to hurt him because the type of officer that I was, I gently literally brought him down to the ground so he wouldn't get kicked or hit or anything like that. And he decided to go. It's called hidden arm. He hides his arm under himself. And when getting him under arrest, I ended up scraping the hell out of my hand. So I had to peroxide it and all this kind of stuff. It was disgusting. And in that moment, I went up to him and I told him, I could charge you with injury to an op- like resisting arrest, injury to an officer. And in the state of Texas, that would have been a felony. It would have completely changed the trajectory of his life. There's no going to college. There's no going to the military. There's no – all a lot of his options get taken away from him if I did that. I looked at him and thought I was doing him a favor by not charging him. For that and I told him that and I genuinely felt that I had that kid dodge a bullet and I don't know what his other situations were in his family and his but he was a, a kid that lived the same experience that bunches of kids live that don't punch their family and jump out of a, a roof and go over there this kid was willing to commit violence and not even a year and a half later he goes around and shoots a kid dead over so I don't even know what it was over but I remember seeing his name come across for a murder warrant I think Fort Worth mm-hmm. actually picked him up and uh that crushed me. But there was a kid I could have charged, which it probably would have put him in the system, but there might be someone breathing today because of that. And because I'm all spirit of the law, whatever, feeling good about myself because I didn't press that charge, there's a small possibility that because of that, he was let out way sooner or they were a lot more lenient on him because of that. It didn't even make my report. I remember going out of my way to turn my body cam off so that they wouldn't see the injury. Because my sergeant at the time would have been all about... Oh, yeah. Why the hell aren't you charging that charge? And I didn't it understand it. wouldn't have been it. an option. You would have That's what I'm getting. <laughs> if my sergeant would have said that, it did better make your report or I'm not approving it kind of thing. Yeah. And they're looking out for us. We're out here getting injured, you know, trying to go and enforce the law. And it was a learning moment for me. And it's not that I went around charging everyone and their mother, you know, but it, it's – there are real consequences when you take that perspective way too far or when you take that perspective – um and you allow it to justify things without hearing, uh, without taking, you know, uh, uh, a consultant perspective on, hey, ask your other officers, ask your supervisor, you know, really look at historically how this stuff has played out. And it, you're not always going to make the right decision. You won't. That's just the nature of that. That's, the, that's being human. But the consequences of not making the right decision as an officer versus anyone else are catastrophic at times. And so that's really something that uh, both civilians don't understand and new cops coming into it have to oftentimes learn the hard way. And I did in that instance. And it's, it's a hard... His face right there is exactly how I felt when I saw that murder warrant come out. <laughs> so uh, it's important. Um, so anyways, thank you for watching us watch this semi-depressing video. <laughs> on, on, uh, yeah, but that's realistic. Yeah, I mean, the, that's a realistic... Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a real... It's a very uniquely law enforcement-related experience. Literally no one else is. Ex- well, that's what I like about this show. They yeah. had to have consulted real police officers. Sure, sure. They To get good. stuff like that, like... Yeah, they, they did a pretty good job. This, this is one of those gray area things that, that's unique to us. And, and that, you know, it's a reason why I refer to people as civilians. Because they, they, I, 99% of the people I've met have never been stuck in that position to make those types of decisions. They never will be. You're never yeah. going to have and a I'm decision glad, like that. Because I think the people are happier for that. So, um, anyways, uh, thank you for riding Two Man with us. Please like, uh, comment, and subscribe. Turn on the little bell notifications if you're watching this. Uh, if you like this video, you're probably going to like the rest of them that we do. You will. Uh, go ch- follow us on TikTok. We have a bunch of funny skits on there. Uh, we go live twice a week on YouTube, so go check us out on that. And if you put on our notifications, you'll see that. Uh, you can go see us live there. Ask us questions. Uh, ask two cops or retired cops questions that won't get you in trouble because we can't arrest you anymore. And, um... Go join our Patreon. Mm-hmm. 
as Listen. low as one dollar a month if you bums um that gives you access to our discord and that discord is how we set up our let's plays uh and how we organize the content that we're going to be doing so i appreciate you uh hanging out with us. and until next time peace